Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today. I learned we're going to look at Rails and using cookie authentication this episode using Devise JWT cookie. And so if you don't like using the authorization header um, the last way with the um, with JWTs and local storage, obviously you want to do it with cookies. So this will protect you from cross-site scripting and but it's going to limit you in the fact that you can't reuse it for certain things like mobile apps and multiple uh, different domains, etc. So let's go ahead and dig into this. Um, I'm going to throw out there, I have a new Patreon account. If you like our content, go ahead and support me. That would be fantastic. And I also have a newsletter, programmingtil.com, where I send out the latest episodes as well as inter interesting tech things I find on the internet. So let's go ahead and look at the code. So we've changed a few things here, a gem file and a bunch of other files. We'll walk through them all. So the first thing is we're going to use this different gem, Devise JWT Cookie, built on similarly to Devise JWT. And you can see I have a fork here that I'm referencing in my GitHub to my version of this. Let's look at what I've changed. So the original account is this scar hand, Devise JWT. I had to make a few changes for my application. The first thing um, was he didn't have AUDs working. He had a fix me in here. So really all you need is to call this uh, environment helper to get the AUD help header, and then AUDs work. So uh, I don't know why he didn't do that before. He was using all the rest of the same. So very simple, uh, and that's in the cookie strategy. Bumped this up uh, a few versions as I was testing out things. And the other thing was he didn't have um, a call to the token revoker um, within here. He was just removing the cookie. Um, that's it. So I still wanted to have the allow listed JWT um, implementation, and I wanted it to still call the allow listed JWT and revoke those as well. So that way the user can see that those have been revoked in addition to the cookies. So that way we can keep track of that for the user. So those are two small changes I made in this gem file, in this gem. And then in here, in the user, we just added a new strategy, JWT cookie authentic hateable. And this comes from this, this gem. So you can look at his implementation for how that works. In devise our, uh, RB down at the bottom here, we have a new little line uh, below our JWT config. We have JWT cookie config. One of the things we could do is set the name. I'm just going to set it to the JWT. You could set this to something else if it helps you feel good about obfuscating it. Next up, within our course file here, we need to set credentials to true. We also need to make sure we don't have a wildcard domain anymore. So you definitely need to have it limited to what domains you need. And then same, this is for my development, and this is for production and staging. So credentials are true. Next up, you need to, in the session controller here, the only thing I did is I am no longer returning the JWT in my JSON response, because it's not needed. It's going to be set in the cookie automatically now. And that is all we needed to do to use cookies. And we'll show it being used in the next Svelte episode. So you can go in over to the next episode in a few days, and I will show how that is actually being set, and you could see it live. But in the meantime, uh, I did update my specs, so we'll run through those in just a moment. A few things you may have missed. I did change the create to remove this limitation on the post size to be true. Um, as we were building out our application, you wouldn't really do this. That was just an example of what you could do if you needed to implement logic, whereby you're limiting users on certain things such as create. Similarly, in the post request spec, I commented out this. I could just delete it at this point. Um, but again, not going to be using this at the moment. But we may do some other kind of limitations around this. And so it's just kind of example code. But then the object creators here, the one thing I needed to change is response cookies instead of the JSON parsing the body back as we're not returning it anymore. So we have that 
in the cookie. Um, other un unrelated things, I just added a couple of things here. I did go ahead and change this to be allow blank false for the title and the content. And then change these to be bang for the delete and update because I want them to throw an error. And that's to remember if you ha use the bang method, it'll throw an error instead of just turning a falsy statement. And then we're gonna do a blanket rescue from record error. And this calls with, which means it's gonna be some function. And the function name is record invalid. Scroll down to record invalid. I just basically want to partition out the message. So right now it says validation failed, title can't be blank, validation failed, blah, blah, blah. And I wanna remove this portion of that, validation failed, and just say title can't be blank. And then I'm gonna return that message with a meta message. And that's gonna be for the front end um, with a 401. And that's it for this. That might, should be a 402, I can't recall. Um, about the improper or bad request. Let's look that up. HTTP bad request. 400. So it should probably be a 400. So that's it for this episode. We can go ahead and run the specs and you can see they pass using the cookie instead of using the JWT. And we will dive in on the very next episode to Svelte and implementing this on that side so you guys can be happy about using cookies here. Thank you. See you guys next time.